All right. What's up, y'all? Welcome back. Uh, we've got a studio spotlight for you. This is Kale holding the fort, and I am joined by Jen Aguilar of JNR Photo. Jen, what's up? What's up? Nothing much. Enjoying the time off right now. That's no doubt, right? Just kind of the, the rest and reflect strategize period before the sprint that's coming up. Oh, yeah. The wedding no season will be here before we know it. That's it. And the weather's starting to warm up, too. I, yes. In Denver, it was, it was 68 degrees yesterday, and I was like, oh, uh, do I wear shorts today? I'm so disoriented. It's the last week of February, so it's, you can tell the world's changing. Seasons are Yeah. Uh, Our first swamp. wedding of the year was a couple weeks ago, and it was 60 degrees. They had the ceremony outside, and then two days later, it was like 30, whatever. It worked out. It was great. Yeah. I was like, we don't like shooting in the winter, so the, for the first one to be 60 degrees was perfect. Money, no doubt. <laughs> um, so as a quick reminder, or I guess just to kind of help folks still getting familiar with the program, uh, pretty straightforward agenda. So love to hear about your studio, how you started, team dynamics, the stuff you do, any fun details there. And then we'll get into kind of that, like the trajectory, like uh, the Genesis moment. When did you get into it? When was like the, we're doing this moment. That's always my favorite. It's like, you're at the, the, the edge of a cliff and it's like, we're jumping, you know, let's hold hands and jump in. Yeah. Um, and then we'll, we'll talk more about kind of milestones or, or memorable moments, breakout moments uh, where you achieve something you thought was impossible or you thought, you know, the lights were going to go off and you kept the business going and you ended up on top of the mountain and stuff like that. <clears throat> and then we'll talk more tactically about Pixify and, and the impact that, that Pixify has had on your business. And then we'll zoom out to some the macro, the meta. If Jen had a billboard for her peer group, what would you put on it in terms of advice? Yeah, perfect. Cool. Sounds good. All right, so let's take it from the top. Tell us about JNR Photo. So JNR Photo is actually a husband and wife team. I'm one half of that team, obviously. Um, my husband is the creative main photographer person, um, like staying behind the scenes. And what we've learned recently is he wants to stay behind the scenes. So I am more of the face. I love to talk and I basically run the business side of our business, which is, you know, social media, client communications, all the admin stuff. Um, we do 98% weddings and a, just a sprinkle of portraits a year, but our real passion is definitely photographing weddings. We do about 30 to 40 a year. Um, and our style, I guess you can say, is very candid, documentary, very much heavily focused on real moments, not so much the posy stuff. Um, of course, we do get the traditional stuff here and there, but um, our passion is really more in the storytelling of a wedding day. Right on. And where are you based, or is there kind of a geographic focus? New Jersey. So we are in Jersey, but we love to travel. So it'll take us anywhere. Like, we'll shoot weddings on the beach in Hawaii. It will yeah. shoot, you know, <laughs> no doubt. It's been a while since we've done destinations. Like pre-COVID, after that, it just got too complicated. But totally. So, looking back, and how long have you been around? We've been shooting since 2010. So 14, 14 years. years. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So we're gonna have to go way back. But I guess what was that moment, especially with, with a husband wife duo? Oh, and I, I got a joke because I they'd be like, "Yeah, we're husband wife duo." And uh, by the way, I I mean I do all the work, but he's yes. involved. <laughs> yeah. right. But he's around, so he's part of the team. Um, he does the editing and all that stuff that he will not let me do. So it's, it works. No doubt. Um, so I guess that Genesis moment. So 14 years ago, like when were you like? And I guess did you jump into it together? Or was it like, a, I'm going to test the water, so he's going to test the water, she's shooting stuff, and then was, all of a sudden... So we got married in 08, and then we picked the camera up in 2010. Um, he was mostly shooting, like, cars, landscapes, things that I thought were boring. And then I started really, like, I enjoyed more photographing people. Like, we had a nephew, we, I was photographing family members, things like that. Um, and then a friend of mine from high school, her mom was remarrying her high school sweetheart. So they were older in life, having a very small wedding in a restaurant. And they were like, hey, can you come shoot this wedding? Um, and I told them, like, well, you nearly need to, like, get someone that knows what they're doing. But they were like, we've seen your stuff. It was very cheap. I think we did it for, like, 150 bucks. A couple of hours. It bought a new flash for us. Um, and then, like, a month later, another friend from high school, her photographer bailed on her the week of the wedding. And she had seen the other uh, friend's photos and was like, hey, come shoot our wedding. We did that. And then it just was like kind of snowballed from there. And we were like, okay, we really enjoy weddings and you can get paid for it. We're not really getting paid for like photographing cars and landscapes. <laughs> so maybe it could become a business. And I don't know when it clicked. It just kind of naturally happened. I was just promoting it, posting it, and, and it just took off from there. Then we went to 
maybe like a handful of weddings a year until 2016 when I went full time. I learned really quickly it's very hard to run a full time, like work a full time job and try to run a business at the same time. Mm. So once I quit my job in 2016, that's when the business really kind of took off after that. Cool. And that's a super common trajectory, right? Where it's like a hobby that mm -hmm. all of a sudden you become pretty legit at. And it's like, okay. And then you kind of have some natural demand from your, your warm network. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they're referring you to people and now you're kind of one you know degree of separation out. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh my goodness, we're doing business with strangers and they're paying us a lot of money. And it's mm -hmm. like, okay, cool. This is a thing that's self-sustaining and let's go for it. Yeah. And it was no turning back since then. Right on. Oh, that's so good. Okay, <laughs> cool. Uh, oh, and I was going to say too, it's, it's tough to compete with the subject matter of love. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know, those vintage cars are cool, but look at these two humans in love. That is something to capture, you know, like it's mm -hmm. tough to compete with that. And it's a market that will probably never go away. So it's like, it's, I mean, there's a struggle to stay in within it. That's a whole nother story, but it's a market that if you keep actively working in it, it, it won't go away anytime soon. So cool. And I guess that's maybe a more pointed question for you. Like, I guess. I mean, I've seen a lot of, and from my perspective, right, just kind of like the evolution in terms of like society's approach to weddings. Like mm -hmm. I've kind of observed it's no longer, or there's a preference where it's less about this big bang. We invite 350 people. It's more like, hey, let's kind of rethink what mm -hmm. we value out of this, this ritual. And maybe it's a smaller scale. And then all of a sudden you start to see elopements and kind of more intimate couple things that are very destination based. So I'd be curious kind of what trends you see in the wedding industry and how that's kind of impacted your business, just like in the last year, let's say. Yeah. And this was, I was going to tie us into the advice that I was going to give later. I guess I'll kind of give advice on how to fix that. But right now we are definitely in like a, it's weird after COVID, like everyone was working, like weddings were a big thing. Everyone wanted to get married. Weddings were bigger than ever. And I thought people would think it would be a smaller transition, like you mentioned, more intimate. But in the, in the two years after COVID, it was like massive weddings. Like okay. we're going all out. We're going to celebrate. We didn't get to do this for a whole year. Like we were all super busy. Um, and now I think the trend is now leaning into more of what you mentioned, especially a lot of things tying into the economy is that people are planning smaller, making it um, – more meaningful to them um, and investing what's in the priority, which is like photo, video, um, the wedding itself, the food, but it's definitely like, um, we're definitely seeing a, a, tra a transition right now for sure. Cool. So just to spit that, and it's interesting too, right? I, I, looking back, I mean, COVID was so weird, but it was like how much pent up energy there was. Yeah. Where I think on, on one side, it was like, man, I can't wait to go to a big party. And mm -hmm. then you go to a big party and you're like, whoa, there's a lot of people here. I'm not sure I like this anymore because yeah. I'm like still a little bit jaded from what went down. So it yeah. sounds kind of like that the demand, that kind of energy was pent up. So it was like, boom, mm -hmm. COVID kind of the, the, the cape dropped, more yeah. big scale events. And now things are normalizing a little bit. And But all yeah. the while, it's really been a function of the couple's values and yes. what their short list is and then kind of investing accordingly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Cool. cool. Other breakout moments, uh, like you look back, JNR, and it's like, whoa, what, like what's one thing that just stands out to you as like a cherished memory? And it can be as random or weird as you want. Um, breakout moments, I think, like my husband and I have two different, because we will function in two different sides of the business, like he has his own major breakout moments that's more like on the creative side. So I know for him when he entered um, WPPI's print competition for the first time mm -hmm. and he won first place in uh, wedding photojournalism, got called on stage, got the award. Like that was a huge moment for him. And I think it was like, you don't realize that you're kind of missing that acknowledgement after yeah. working so long. You're like, oh, awards don't matter. But then when you kind of get some recognition from your peers, it definitely makes you feel better and more inspired to keep doing what you're doing. So that was a really huge moment for him and, and for us. So that was, that was a really good year. Um, for me, from the business side, I don't know. I think, I guess it's whenever just maintaining like year after year, that's a win for me. Like knowing yeah. I'm still in business, knowing that I'm doing well, um, there's a couple of years after COVID, like I mentioned, when we just like took off, those were our biggest revenue years. Um, so that for me, it's just running a successful business is, is that for me. Totally. And then like consistency is the mm -hmm. true, like 
proxy of of performance right it's like you can have breakout years but can you Mm -hmm. continually you know score this many points a game it's like Mm -hmm. that those are the most kind of iconic folks over time so that that's amazing and i think the other thing that's interesting too is like feedback loops and -hmm. how important they are in any career and something that i've always admired about photography wedding photography in particular is that it's a tight feedback loop right where Mm -hmm. with each client like you're kind of iterating a product so to speak but the feedback loop is so tight and usually it's so emotional right yeah. like if i do something well it's like hey good job kale you know but if like you if you totally crush a, a wedding you know photography it, it, they're like in tears you know and yeah. it's like this is you captured the most meaningful experience of our life and you absolutely it's so it's like incredible tight feedback loops but to your point the yeah. bigger feedback loop amongst your peer group where it's like hey the work that you're doing is extraordinary that's something mm-hmm. that is very hard to come by so that's a really cool kind of memory yeah Right on. Okay. Uh, so let's change gears a little bit. So Pixify. Um, yeah. Like what's Pixify done for you? We've even put with Pixify for 10 years or maybe it might be 11 now. Let me check my little counter. No, it's still 10, but um, <laughs> <laughs> still since almost the beginning of our business, but um, it's definitely kept us organized, um, professional, which is what I love to so, like in like client communication, keeping our workflow, everything with our clients is so organized that like, they don't have to worry about anything. They're going to get their regular communication, reminding them about their sessions, their invoices, their upcoming appointments and things like that. Um, And they can go in at any time and just check whatever they need to check as far as like their contract um, invoice. Um, And for me on the back end, it keeps you up to date on their workflow. Like when you go from shooting a handful of weddings a year, yeah, you can manage it on like a Word document or Excel or whatever. But when you start growing, you need something to really keep you in check. So like workflows, making sure I'm on top of my game with all my clients, that nothing's being missed. That's what keeps us providing the level of service for couples that um, we want to give. So, and like I mentioned, it's been 10 years. We've seen the progression. We've seen ups and downs, but our commitment has always been to Pixify and we're really excited to see what's to come. No doubt. That makes two of us. Next quarter, <laughs> big, big quarter coming. Cool. <laughs> and so I guess just to kind of work, what I've heard too is like, and I, I, need a, I need a new quote because I just, James Clear, I raise him on every single podcast I'm involved in, but it's like my... <laughs> It's just, you don't rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems, right? And I think that's so pure. And there is kind of a tipping point where it's like, because it takes effort to systematize your stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So you have to get to a level of complexity where the juice is worth the squeeze, so so to speak. But once you have your systems in place, that lends well towards predictability, repeatability, yeah. and kind of that consistent experience, which is the name of the game in any field. Um, and all the while, you're kind of reducing like that cognitive load where it's like, you know, like I used to, every time I would pack on trips, I would be like, okay, what do I need to pack? And it was so mentally draining. Now I'm like, here's my checklist. And I just go through it. And any <laughs> workflow, it's like, if you do a workflow more than twice, outline it, document it, you know, and then inject as much automation and templating as humanly possible. Cause now you can think about how to grow the business, other areas. And then you also have good analytics, right? Where it's like, Hey, this thing is not great. Like we can, and you can isolate little areas and be like, there's room for improvement here. And it kind of gives you a North star, which outside of having that stuff just laid out very simply. And I know we've spoken about the client life cycle and some other things, Mm -hmm. uh, but that's kind of the name of the game too. Cause then you all of a sudden have metrics working for you. Yeah. And it's like, And the recording is great. Like I know I can go in, I keep track of everything. Like it can be annoying. Like sometimes I do things manually just because I don't want to forget. Um, so like seeing where my referral sources are coming from. I will go in and manually put in a lead, even if it came from like Instagram, just because I kind of want to keep track of where things are coming. So like that has been super helpful. So I know where to invest my time and or my money in. So like I knew at some point that not wasn't working for me. Okay, like now more time into Instagram. Um, and I also use it for our money. So like keeping track of everything. This is my QuickBooks. It's not like I don't use anything else, which is great. Um, and that just keeps us flowing and seeing where things are coming from, which is super helpful. Totally. And as you called out, like there's, <clears throat> I think for, in my line of work, right, just kind of software to the bone, I always jump towards like automating, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, you might like the, like the golden kind of rule is that you do things manually because you're going to iron out the kinks, mm-hmm. right? So you do something kind of manually and then you get it to a place where like, hey, we haven't changed how this thing works in a while. Now let's inject technology and see what we get. And then the comment that you made is there's some stuff 
like the only way to know how the sausage is made is to be in the kitchen working yeah. with your ha hands, right? So there's mm -hmm. some stuff that no matter what, like me, I go through every support ticket every week because mm -hmm. I just want to feel it, right? I want to taste the sausage. I'm like, ooh, this needs more salt, you know? Like, or yeah. man, this is, you know, this is the quality's not there. So I, I totally appreciate that stuff that like, there is some stuff that you want to touch with your hands every week because it just brings you into that moment, right? You can't replicate mm -hmm. that. You want to, like, I guess there's some things you can distance yourself from and trust automation, other things you want to stay up close with. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, and do, do you look much like, do you have KPIs for the business? Like, are there metrics that you kind of fixate on? Just income. <laughs> yeah, right. The metric. Yeah, right. <laughs> and like I mentioned before, like referral sources. So we know where to, um, if we wanted to like invest in something, like we were paying for ad services for a while and seeing if they worked or not. And then kind of seeing where the leads are coming from. But those are the two main like money and, and referral sources. Are probably cool. what we're and that's just a fun, like you got to have your data in order to a degree, right? Which is like, we need to actually categorize where these leads are coming from. Mm -hmm. But then once your data is there, it allows some pattern recognition, just yeah. simple, right? Like, oh, this referral source is ripping. This mm -hmm. one is not. Let's move the money from the not ripping thing to the you know one that is, or let's explore new channels uh, and we can run little experiments and see how that stuff performs next to what is really working for us. And you can kind of build layers that, yep. that serve the business from there. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Cool. That's all good. Very good stuff. Uh, yeah. It's like what metric, like the metric, dude, uh, <laughs> like we should call that the business metric. It is income and that's the name of the game. Um, cool. So now zooming back, um, advice for your peers. Um, I guess touching on what I mentioned before, which is like a weird kind of state of the industry right now, which is that post COVID like lull that everyone's kind of feeling right now. I'm seeing a lot in local groups of people just having issues with booking weddings or advertising and things like that. And I think for a, a couple of years, people became complacent just because weddings were just flooding to us. Like it was just like, it wouldn't stop. It, but now the faucet is a little dripping, but it's back to what it was pre-COVID, right? So mm -hmm. I think what we need to just go back to a 20 to 2019 mindset of like being consistent with our marketing, hustling a little bit harder, um, connecting with vendors, venues, going back to the old school way of how to do things, which is basically hitting the ground running again um, because it's not, the flow is not there is what it used to be. So I think really being consistent with your marketing, putting yourself out there, the exposure, um, and that's that's my advice to people right now. It's, a, it's an interesting time, but I think we can't forget where we came from and kind of the work that we used to have to do before this time period that we went through right now. Totally. And that kind of touches on a business concept that I've been a little bit obsessive over where it's like, and this is, it kind of sounds tacky, but it's like to be e extra extraordinary. So extraordinary is extra plus ordinary. You can't mm -hmm. be extraordinary unless you own the ordinaries. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like, and it's so rare to execute flawlessly on the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Like, so it's almost a situation where if you can execute on the fundamentals very consistently and at an elite level, you will be the best or you'll at least be top quartile. You don't need to do like, there's no silver bullets. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like you need, you know, in basketball, you need to dribble, pass and shoot and just mm -hmm. practice those things. And if you become yeah. extraordinary in those, or if you really own those elements, then that opens you up to do things that are perhaps unique. So that's uh, own the basics. I love yeah. it. And, I, and calibrate and expectations. Right. It's uh, and this doesn't work out as my wife commented, but most people can follow it. But it's like expectations equals uh, oh, no, I'm sorry, result success equals expectations minus results. Mm -hmm. So it's like basically everything is anchored around your expectations. Yep. And so it's important kind of economies move, the market moves, there are kind mm -hmm. of big breakout years, there are tougher years. It's kind of like, what was the baseline across all those ups and downs? And let's kind of hold ourselves accountable to what that baseline is, because it's easy to get disoriented when it's like, man, I wish it was the days when leads were just you know raining from the sky and it's like well that yeah. might have just been a thing that it was only going to exist for a few years so let's mm -hmm. maybe recalibrate our expectations and go from there yeah and it, it ties back to what it, we, now that i'm thinking about what you mentioned before about like what was a breakthrough moment for us um in 22 um we started implementing in-person sales which is basically mm -hmm. pushing a lot of printed products upselling wedding albums and that really sustained us for the past two three years and now like 
I know that it'll sustain us for the next couple of years because we've now become full service. And a lot of photographers don't realize this. There's so much money left on, like on the table when you're not, when you're just handing over files and not really giving them a full service of like, this is what we're going to do with your photos. Now they're not going to just live on your computer for the rest of your life. We're going to print them. We're going to hang them. You're going to get these big, beautiful albums. So that's what, that was a big breakout thing for me in the past couple of years. And that's really sustained us. And I think that'll sustain us moving forward if we're doing less weddings, but we're kind of supplementing any lost income in that way through the printed product, which is really valuable, not only for us, but for our clients, because they're getting something from their day. And it's not just like, let me pull up my iPad and show you yeah. my wedding photos. Uh, or like, oh, actually, I'm going to go back to Instagram and just, you know, yeah. scroll. It's like, no, no, like when it's a physical artifact, that's almost impossible to replace, right? And yeah. you, you raised some interesting, like through the lens of like business or if we kind of assign a business vocabulary. This was uh, the most important thing I learned in business school. To grow revenue, you either sell more widgets or mm -hmm. you charge more per widget. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> wow, that's pretty simple. So I, what you kind of just articulated, right, is that as a function of kind of in-person sales, you were able to create more value for your clients mm -hmm. and, and expand how much revenue they spend with you. Yes. So you're selling the same amount of widgets or maybe fewer widgets, but mm -hmm. you, there's more revenue attached to those widgets. So average contract value, average bookings, there's yes. some different terminology around that. But that's a great strategy because I think a lot of photographers are like, I need to drive leads. And yes, mm -hmm. more leads make, you know, the doctor go away, right? Like yeah. that's usually the answer for everything. But the other big lever is like, what do our typical engagements look like? Mm -hmm. What are the most in-demand products? And then if you have good analytics, you can say, hey, everybody at minimum wants a photo album. Yeah. Cool. Let's bolt that into our base thing mm -hmm. and then let's make it consultative in person so that we can actually kind of map the products in our, in our catalog to what they're up to. Um, and that's now, honestly, that's probably the best place to start if you're trying yeah. to grow, right? Cause you're just mm -hmm. kind of working through the momentum that's already there and worst case scenario, you try it and it doesn't work. And then you're like, all right, we exactly. need to get back to kind of organic client acquisition and go from there. Yeah. And it's a very scary thing because you think like, Oh, like I'm not performing as well without IPS, like getting leads. Now, if I'm adding this extra element of like, people are not going to want that now it's going to be more complicated, more difficult. Um, but you don't know what you don't know. And like, you don't understand your value until you actually go through this process and you're like, Oh, like they will pay for this or like they do value it. And now I have to bring that value into myself and be proud of what I'm telling my couples and, and promote it that way. Totally. Cause nobody wants to be salesy, right? That's yeah. like the most icky thing. And it's like, well, actually you're not pitching something they don't want. Like you're not mm -hmm. forcing anyone to do anything, right? It's like, you're kind of just bringing more awesomeness to the equation and everybody's jazzed about that. Or it's at least worth a conversation if they tell you yes. to pound sand. It's like, all right, cool. Have a nice day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, here, back to what we do. Um, excellent. Well, Jen, this was so awesome. Uh, thank, thank you, you so, so much for your time and for all the support and all the love and all the feedback and all the awesomeness. We, we truly, sincerely appreciate it. And I awesome. uh, can't wait to get this up and get this out to, to the community. Me too. Thank you so much for having me. All right, and we'll see you next time. More Studio right. Spotlights coming. Cheers. Bye.